I am so coordinated. I think I missed the beat after like the, the second or third hand flip of the Macarena. I tried my best, but that's what you get for being tall and uncoordinated. Um, it's led to a lot of me getting cut from sports teams in the past, but it's okay. Um, we're here now sitting in the studio, even better than playing basketball throughout high school, sitting in the studio, trading stocks. That's what it's all about here today. Happy Wednesday. Happy, um, hump day, I guess. I don't really know much besides Wednesday. Other than that, at the time of me recording this, um, I guess it's also happy FOMC day because there will be news at 2 PM today, actually about two hours. Uh, from when I'm recording this for interest rates. So I'm going to be a little, you know, blindsided here. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of change uh, after this is already out, just based on, you know, what, uh, what happened with the interest rates. It's looking like right now, there's the expectation that they're going to be raised 50. Um, but if they're raised really anything less than that, probably going to be a little bit bullish for the market. And we'll see fingers crossed that could lead to some really good momentum and good bounce on the spy and everything. Uh, my, my personal watches actually have a lot to do with how the spy does uh today and going into the rest of the week so you know what without without further ado let's just hop on into that give me a second while i do a little flipperoonie there we go look at that all right so this is the spy and like i said i'm really just um focused on kind of the spy over the next few days because i think that's going to determine a lot of momentum for us uh if if we can in my opinion i want to see a break over 400 um, that 400 level is just so key, in my opinion, for uh, for the SPY. And, you know, we generally tend to see the best momentum come after the bounce is kind of already, after the bottom is in. Um, and then generally, as we continue to run on the SPY is when we see like a week or two of momentum, even after it's maybe topped out a little bit. But a $400 break on the SPY would give us a nice little short-term uh, trend break here. And again, that big psychological level. So I'm hoping we can break out of that after, you know, a, a little uh, fake breakdown, new higher low here. Everyone's like all scared and everything because of the banks. And don't get me wrong. That stuff is really scary. And actually, that's one of the things we missed. Uh, you know, last last week, I was just absolutely swamped. But um, while there was not a small cap recap out, there was that banking crisis that kind of happened. We really see that with FRC still trading down a lot. Oh man, it's still down today. Um, so most of the other ones kind of bounced a bit. Uh, SIVB, I believe is still halted and probably will be because that company went on while well, I got seized. Um, after, you know, this is what started it all was as, as a Silicon Valley bank, SIVB where you said that huge gap, oops, ah, back. There we go. Um, you know, where they basically didn't have enough cash. They were tried to do an offering and whatever. So that's crazy. That started the whole thing. But then that led to ones like FRC, First Republic Bank, um, which is also going and facing a lot of issues right now. And I haven't stayed up to date too much on it because these bank stocks, I know a couple of my friends made some really great bounce trades on these, but I'd never seen anything like this before. Uh, this is one of those things. It's a great learning experience for me, but I've never seen in my trading career, a bank go under. Uh, I, you know, I thought, I guess I've just been living in a bubble for the past, what's been 2008 when those other, what, what was it? 200 banks went under in 2008, um, 20 or 15 years. It's been like 15 years since this has really happened to this scale. Um, and I've just never seen it. So this is a great learning experience for me, but that definitely did add a lot of fear into the markets. And we saw the spy act accordingly after all this, you know, going from like four Oh three down to, wow, geez, under three eighty. now bouncing back up like near 400, the government really, really stepped in and was like, Hey, no, we're going to make sure everyone's okay. Um, which, you know, say what you will about that. They're, they're doing what they can to save the economy. Um, I could go into a whole video about that. Bring back the good old you know, two-way talk show here. I'm talking for a minute. Could bring back that whole thing about how like the government trying to save the banks here is, you know, big moral dilemma here. Do we just let them fail and let everyday people, businesses, and banks feel the consequences of those um, decisions? Or do we let the government step in, save the economy, get like three or four major banks and just kind of prolong the problem? I don't know. I don't know. Um, I'm all for... I'm all for having the market up, but I know everyone's like, I want the market to crash. 
why? Why do you want the market to crash? Like, do you, <laughs> I don't know. Everyone like wants to be a hyper bear right now. I'm in the mindset where I like want, maybe not morally, but I kind of want the, you know, the economy to stay saved. And right now they are doing that um, just for the purpose of being able to, you know, keep trading some momentum. Because I think if they, you know, do save this, listen, the bottom could be in. Like, it's not unrealistic to think that 340 from a high of 480 on the spy, okay, 470. That's like, it's actually crazy. It's a huge drop. But it's, uh, you know, I'm not here to predict anything. So let's let's go back to the charts. I'm done with my whole banking rant. I could do a whole, oh, wow. Got some, uh, got some nice movers I'm looking at. The big one I want to talk about outside of the banking crisis that happened uh, when I was gone uh, from small cap recap. One sector that I like a lot stems from this stock right here, AI. Now, full disclosure, I've actually already got a position in it. I started in about two days ago. So this is, you know, my bias take on it because I am long AI. Um, so I'm going to be a little bit biased, but I just kind of want to go through my thoughts on it. And, you know, I think this, you know, the sector already heated up, but I don't know if it's necessarily done. Um, we had this huge run AI, of course, being the actual leader, the stock AI um, run from 10 to 30. Here's the deal. All I know is that AI is still kind of all the talk. And if anything, it's kind of becoming a little bit more mainstream over the last uh, few weeks as chat GPT and all of these other uh, AI companies and websites become available to, you know, use to the public. That's crazy. That's great. And all the while, all the while, this is kind of becoming really, really quickly integrated to the real world. All the while, AI is actually just holding up extremely well. Uh, in fact, I'm looking fully technically at it. I'm not, my thesis as isn't as much, you know, news-based and usage-based as it is technical-based as to why I wanted to get in this. So obviously we had this huge run up to 30 and then we had this kind of drop, consolidate down at 20. Earnings winner, gap up, tested that breakout level at 30 bucks. Wasn't well, able to do anything and then just kind of falls all the way back down to support. And I'm looking at it, and on this day right here, on March 15th, we actually had a fake break of that support by not not much. Support was at like $20.27. This break down, breaks down uh, to a low of 2016, whereas the previous low was, yeah, like 2030s, 2040. It only broke by like 20 cents, but if I'm a trader, I'm setting, well, I am a trader. I'm setting, I set alerts at key levels on charts that I look at uh, and want to keep looking at because those alerts are going to you know, let, let me know, all right, is the stock just breaking out? Is it just breaking support? And so I'm imagining if you're pretty loaded in the short, you're probably looking at it enough. And when you see that support break finally here, it's kind of a good sign for you. But then all of a sudden you get this bounce and we had this little mini consolidation in this range. You basically just had this coil forming in here from uh, in the low 20s. And so I wanted to start in on this dip here uh, so I got in on the 20th, I started and then added through this trend break. And now I'm just kind of riding it. Fake breakdowns are generally set up for the greatest, the biggest bullish runs uh, and fake breakouts, obviously uh, tend to do the opposite, set up, for, uh, set up for the biggest dumps. This never even broke out. So I like that it stayed in the range, fake breakdown just slightly. And now we're breaking out of this range. Could take some time. I have no idea. I I'm just... And I'm just in the in the trade here, um, but my risk level is down here, right at 21 or right at 20 bucks. And you know, we'll see if uh, that trade ends up panning out. If it does, though, then that's kind of where I want to be shifting focus to. Um, obviously, trying to you know make some money on the main mover itself. But then the ones like here, I'll actually pull up a couple charts here. Let's just pull up a few. We've got BBAI. Gosh, this guy's caffeine is kicking in. I am. I'm, I'm feeling crazy right now. Um, BBAI, we've got these AI movers that are soup. Did it again. Well, who's saying that song? Did it again. Oops. Uh, did it. Brady Spears. Our, this is what I know. I mean, I was talking, talking to everyone earlier. I don't know anything about pop culture, movies, music, TVs, nothing. I don't, I don't know a single name, although I did watch a documentary on Mariah Carey last night. So I actually know her story now, which is kind of cool. Um, BBAI, one of those ones that ran with the actual, uh, during the AI movement. What I've noticed about all of these though, nearly all of them, they had these, these small cap runners, right? That followed AI huge runs. So we get this gap up and then this basically run from two bucks up to seven on BBAI 
Uh, GFAI, also another good one to watch. I'll kind of go through. It looks the exact same, if not worse, slash better, depending on how you look at it. I don't want any of these. There we go. Cool. Um, this one, it did a reverse split. So the float's like a micro float now. It was like under a dollar. Uh, but the float's 1.28 million, ran from six up to 24, now falling all the way back down to new all time lows at three bucks. So if AI can break out, I think a lot of these stocks are going to have really strong bounces. I know I've been talking, I think I said that like a month ago too, and I still believe it though. Uh, I still am watching these for bounces because they're such low float. Um, if AI really does lead the way, it, in my opinion, would probably be pretty similar to like what happened during the Indo run uh, when oil and energy got really hot, right? Where oil and energy gets really hot and then we have this main runner, INDO, where same thing has this big run. Well, this is more of a one day run and then that consolidation and then a re breakout. That's when you got the ones like HUSA, you got some of these new ones, um, there. So you get some of these other ones that just might not have a ton of action and might be pretty beaten down. Then all of a sudden, because there's such low flow and there's this big breakout sector and there's a black swan runner, essentially, you really kind of get those black swan uh, style small cap movers where there, a lot of them do tend to be like one day, two day moves. They're not going to, you know, follow as strongly as the leader, but they still do offer really nice opportunities. So that's why I want to make sure I'm keeping an eye on these small cap stocks um, that are in the AI sector. Uh, GFAI and BBAI are two of my favorites. They're the ones I like the most for potential chart, but there are you know plenty of other ones. I don't, I can't even remember all the other ones that ran. Those are my main focus uh, stocks for the coming week or two or three here, but a lot of it's going to be dependent on on the spy. I'm also swinging FNGR, um, which is a little bit interesting for me, but it was just a really basically a risk reward trade where this bottomed out at a dollar. It was a former runner, uh, ran from, you know, 60 cents up to like $10 in a few days, really crazy one. And then it just faded really hard from 10 bucks without really a strong bounce with any volume. Uh, faded down. I mean, you could say this bounce in here, but again, it just had like no volume. When you look at the big runners, like uh, some of the past ones I'm trying to think of, like OCEA, AMBI, HKD, um, all these, all these like just somewhat recent crazy runners, you'll notice a lot of their bounce days are really low and they're really strong with volume. And they're normally a day or two, but they're a little bit hard to catch. So I actually I'm looking at this FNGR in a very similar way where it just kind of faded without a real actual bounce for so long, has this really nice support at a dollar and reminds me of GTII, even though GTII is an OTC. Uh, we'll look at that daily chart here and just kind of compare the similarities. I find myself doing this a lot, just comparing charts to each other, but very similar where you had this big run up dump bounce and then just further dump further dump no real strong bounce although it did have one here basically just had this longer form curl where we set a very clear breakout right here at 207 right we get that one day day and then you get the next breakout attempt that fails and then curl back down and then it breaks out over that level um and basically just goes to the next level oh actually wow not gonna lie to you that looks really good too that looks great. I mean, that looks very similar. It looks like it could do it again. Maybe it bounced up to like four this time. Um, but that's really what I'm looking at in an FNGR is just very similar, a little bit shorter term, but looking at that same kind of breakout over the 170s and maybe a run up to like 250. Um, so I've been swinging that for a few days here. Been going well. I'm in from like the uh, low 120s. And I've been trying to keep trading my trading lately over the past uh, few weeks here. Just a little bit like drawn back, not, not trying to trade as much just because the market's been a little bit tougher, slowed down a bit over, you know, since, uh, the last kind of hot run of February, it's been a slower past few weeks. So dialing focus away, I'm trying to go for a couple small size, slightly, you know, like more swing style setups, but not with size. That's a problem I've had in the past. Whenever I try to swing, I try to swing with full size. Doesn't work out. This is kind of my way. I'm using this as my way of really staying in tune with the market. Um, and still trying to expand my, my, uh, what's the word experience, expand, learn more as a trader and try to incorporate some more swing setups from the market might be a little bit slower, but there's still good setups out there. Whew. Okay. 
Well, this wasn't supposed to be that long, but I'm like I said, I'm just ready to go. I'm feeling it, feeling myself. And I am uh, now I'm about to actually end it, even though I'm still full of energy. I think it's time to go take out some of this energy on the gym. Now, before you guys click away from this video, there's a link down in the description uh, because tomorrow at eight o'clock Eastern, Thursday, the 23rd of March, one of my best friends, Matthew Monaco, for those that don't know him, absolute baller of a trader, although not as big of a baller as me, and Tim Bowen um, are actually doing this thing called Project Alpha. It's a webinar. Now, you do need to click the link on the description to reserve your free seat to this webinar. It's basically going to be showing the indicators that Matt Monaco has used over the course of his past few years trading to help him make that $2 million in trading profits. Now, this is so important because as I've mentioned on today's small cap recap, there are so many potential movers over the next week, couple weeks, maybe even month um, that I'm liking that are setting up here. Now, that said, you need to make sure that you are prepared for these. And being in this webinar, you're going to see the indicators that Matt has used to get him to $2 million. And these are indicators that are extremely important for basically every single supernova black swan massive runner. Make sure you click that link in the description to below because the it's tomorrow at eight o'clock Eastern. Seats are free, but you do need to reserve your spot. Now, how do I end this? And intro to the outro. I'm about to intro the outro. That's how I'm going to end it. Because the last thing you have to do is make sure that you've done four things. There's four things that I want you to do for me. I want you to click the like button. I want you to leave a comment down below saying, Bryce, you're a bigger stud than Matt. Um, I also, and please comment exactly. If, if I've got five people that comment exactly that, I've got a surprise for tomorrow, next week's small cap recap. Um, but we also make sure you're subscribed. Post notifications are on the whole nine yards. But if this video gets 300 likes next week, I am coming in the studio, dripped out my broken, ripped up Versace robe that I haven't worn in like a year because I broke it and ripped it up. 300 likes. I'm going to be like every other YouTuber that's trying to get as many likes as possible, but that many I'm wearing the Versace robe, baby. And we we are going to make bread in the Versace robe if AI does not fail. <laughs> All right, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you back here next week. Happy Wednesday. Happy hump day. Let's go. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and thank you so much for being a part of the Stocks to Trade family. We just hit 100,000 subscribers, but our goal by the end of this year is to get 150,000 new family members a part of our channel. So if you haven't already, be sure to hit that like button, comment down below, hit the subscribe button, and maybe even turn on your post notifications. We cannot do this without your guys' support. So thank you so much. And if you wanna see more of what we're doing, again, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button and comment down below. We'll see you in the next video.